presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Florida. Last night, Jackie Robinson night. Strike opposed, Tom Kohler. Big salad was dealing. The bats arrived. Giancarlo, 457 feet. More runs arrived. And tempers flared. Emotions high. But the fish kept swinging. 11-2 Marlins. Tonight, another win would be picture perfect. Tonight, the Marlins have a chance to take the series from the Nationals. And last night, the Fish beat the Nationals, snapping an eight-game losing streak. They've got the ace. The kid is on the mound. The kids have come down to get a glance at Jose Fernandez. The National League Rookie of the Year goes for Miami. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. The Marlins' eight-game losing streak was punctuated with big home runs by the opposition. So I guess it's fitting that they break the eight game slide with a big home run of their own. Well absolutely right and we've seen Giancarlo not only hit the big home runs but get key base hits with runners in scoring position. But you know what everybody digs the long ball not just the chicks. How about this long ball straight away center field. It's the longest home run that Steven Strasburg has allowed in his young career. Stanton has been on fire five home runs 21 RBIs in the month of April. Look at what he's done the previous four Aprils a 236 average he had a total of six home runs. I mentioned he already has five and look at the RBIs. He has been clutch this month. OK so chicks and everybody else yeah. take the long ball. However, in the eight game losing streak, the Marlins didn't get that great pitching performance until Tom Kohler gave it to him last night. Even Jose Fernandez faltered. What was up with Jose his last start? His fastball. His fastball was up. He didn't have location. He didn't have command. He did have a little period where he struck out six in a row. But one thing's going in Jose's favor. He's 1 0 with an ERA under one in a couple of career starts against the Nationals. That's good news. He's never lost a game here at Marlins Park. In 17 starts, he's 11 and 0. That's more good news. And Jose has learned from that last outing. Chevron starters, Tanner Roark goes for the Nationals. What will the Marlins see from this guy? A little deceptive uh, in the delivery. His fastball's not overpowering. He cuts it. He got a little breaking ball. He's got a change up. They haven't seen a whole lot of him. They saw him one time last year. Amazing how one game can turn things. Now all of a sudden the Marlins with a win tonight will take two of three from the Nationals with Seattle coming in this weekend. Another guy we haven't talked about too much. Marcelo Zuna. Big night last night. Fitting in just fine in the two spot.
and fish. Let's go out to center field. Greg Minervini, Jeff Conan. Rich, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to talk a little Marcelo Zuna. He was. It's hard to get overlooked when you have four hits in a game, but everybody was talking about Kohler, the little altercation, and, and Giancarlo's blast that went another 460. And Ozuna with four hits, a big night in a number two spot in the lineup. Yeah, number two spot. Uh, he's hit all over this lineup, but you know what? It, it's exciting to see a power guy like that. That uh, He's got a couple home runs this year early. He struggled with the power uh, a little bit last year, but right off the get-go, Steven Strasburg, fastball down the middle. He laces a line drive into left field for a base hit. And he just kept on going. Another fastball through the hole uh, over there. Uh, infield variety hit. You see him go up the middle here on a slider away. You really love the way he's going with the, where the pitch is uh, pitched. He's not trying to pull stuff that's outside. You see another pitch away going to right field. He's hit the ball all over the place, and I really like that. Only five RBIs for him this year. Last year he hit primarily fourth or fifth. 65 of the 69 games. This year, as you see there, he's been in four different positions. Six, seven, eight, with the Marlins solidified more in the three, four, five spots. And now this number two spot for four games. It's a little different. What do you think? It's a little different. Uh, you won't necessarily see him. I, I think they're all year at number two spot. When this team is kind of constructed, I think you had Rafael for a call at the top. Uh, and that kind of pushed everything down. I, I like Chris Jelic, who can really handle the bat, maybe in the two spot. But right now, Mike Redman's going with whoever's hitting and whoever's hot, especially the type of the lineup in front of Mike Stanton. One John way or the other, Stanton. it's extending the potential depth of the lineup. Where last year, you were lying on a middle of the order. Boy, now if he's a two guy or a six guy, seven, eight, wherever he is, or a middle of the lineup, uh, that's an extra big bat for the Marlins, who expect him to drive on a lot of runs as the year goes on. All right, the spotlight turns to Jose Fernandez. As he starts against the Washington Nationals, Marlins looking for their second straight. We'll see you in the post game. Group is closed tonight. Marlins Park. Nationals and Marlins. Game three of the three game series. Nationals won big in game one. Marlins won big in game two. This would be Jose Fernandez. Pitch Penny brings you the first pitch. It's a fastball that zips in at the knees for a strike. Fernandez, two and one on the season. This start number four. He's facing Nate McLeod. Look at Jose, that red orange glove. The RA inflated after the six run outing in Philly in just four innings, his last start. And McLeod takes in. The count is two and one. Nationals lineup underwent a bit of a change. 
After batting practice, Bryce Harper scratched. McLeod elevated to the leadoff spot. Anthony Rendon and Jason Worth also scheduled this inning. Tyler Moore into that lineup, and he's hitting seventh and playing left field. So Matt Williams is without some big bats. Tommy Hutton, Ryan Zimmerman with the thumb injury. Denard Span still out with a concussion, and no Harper, at least to start with. 2 2. McLeod bangs one into center field. A lot of room out there. And Ozuna is there and makes the catch. The Nationals come in at 8 and 6. And here is that retooled lineup. Rendon, a hot hitter in the two spot. Jason Worth, Adam LaRoche hits cleanup. A good year against the Marlins already. Ian Desmond, Danny Espinosa, Tyler Moore, Jose Lobaton gets the start behind the plate. And Tanner Roark is on the mound and he hits ninth. And here is Rendon. I'll tell you another thing the Nationals are talking about. They have this game tonight against Jose Fernandez. They go home and play a four game series against the Cardinals. They get Wainwright. They get Waka. They get Lance Lynn and they get Shelby Miller. So they have the work cut out for them. Couple balls out to Ozuna in center. Here's the rest of the defense. Who's that big part of the field? There's the defense with Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton. McGee, Echeverria, Dietrich, no, and uh, Garrett Jones. No changes around that infield. Salta Lamacchia is behind the plate. And so far, so good. Just watching uh, Jose doing what he said he was going to do, saying he wanted to stand a little taller. Uh, he's done that. He's been down with his fastball. So early on, the, the reviews are good. It's interesting how it reverses. He wants to be taller, so his fastball is lower. He was shorter, and his fastball was higher. Against the Phillies, and obviously the Phillies knocked him around. Eight hits in those four innings. Worth up there, one for five in the series, and he takes outside. 97 miles an hour. It's 2 0. Oh. Hard to believe. Jason Worth in his fourth year with the Nationals. That pitch misses in, and it's 3 0. Oh. Adam LaRoche is on deck. Three and one. Fernandez made just two starts against the Nationals last year. Didn't get a decision, but his ERA was under one, and Dietrich climbs up to snare the line drive off the bat of work. Underway in Miami. Sports Florida is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability 1-800-PICK-AT&T. Rethink possible by Checkers. Visit your local Checkers for the $2 shrimp and fries box. 
And by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com. In Miami tonight, Jose Fernandez, his catcher, Jared Saltalamacchia. Tanner Roark, 27-year-old out of Wilmington, Illinois, 6'2", 220 pounds, takes aim at Miami tonight. Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, and Giancarlo Stanton here in the first. Yellow riding a 10 game hit streak. Roark throws strike one. Generally, Roark does a lot of that. Throws strikes, a lot of first pitch strikes. Sometimes he'll use that get me over curveball for a first pitch strike. Change it. But Christian Yellich working on a 10 game hitting streak has seen a couple of pretty good pitches a fastball and a changeup. Yelich fouls it off. Roark with the Nationals last year made five starts and nine relief appearances. He's had a seven and one record, so he had success in the rotation, came up in their minor leagues after uh, getting traded by the Texas Rangers. Rangers drafted him out of the University of Illinois. And Yelich looks at a really good pitch, 93 mile an hour fastball, strike three call. Yeah, here's a look at the defense for the Nationals. They did make a, a few changes. Now the lineup. We'll go to the lineup. Bubba Yelich and Ozuna and Stanton for the Marlins at the top of the order. Casey McGee all of a sudden catching fire, driving in runs, hitting fifth. Salta Lamacchia, Dietrich, and Echeverria filling out the bottom part. Here's Ozuna. And Marcelo Ozuna jam shot. A dribbler out to short. Desmond on a hop to get Ozuna. Rich, I'll let you handle the defense. All right, I, I need my defense music. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's just like Starsky and Hutch here. Tyler Moore, Nate McLeod, Jason Worth in the outfield, Anthony Rendon at third, and Desmond, the Sarasota kid at short, Danny Espinosa, very good at second. Alan Roach is a gold glover at, at first base. Jose Lobaton behind the plates. And here is Giancarlo Stanton. Takes a fastball down low. Stanton, another mammoth blast. High and deep. And it set the tone last night for a big night. A three run shot in the first inning. And he gets jams. Desmond gets another ground ball. And in seven pitches, Tanner Roar takes care of the fish in the first. Está disponible por SAP. Second inning, first pitch in the air. Ozuna 
to the track and he makes the catch. Now the Roach hits it a long way to left center. Both pitchers working quickly. Both pitchers getting early outs. Yeah, throwing strikes, I think, to this point. I'm pretty sure Jose has thrown nothing but fastballs. He's yet to throw up that good curveball that he has, but he's got four outs using his fastball. Ian Desmond. And then Danny Espinosa here in the second. Much was made of uh, Desmond taking umbrage to Tom Kohler throwing in. Jared Saltalamaki and Desmond had a discussion. I really like the way Desmond. Kohler and Saltalamakia handled themselves after the game and, and just reading the quotes in the paper, all three were very professional. Desmond said he did not think Kohler was throwing in at him, but said, hey, look, this is how I make my living. And he was had missed inside a few times. Kohler said he understood why Desmond was upset. Tom Kohler. Our Geico quote of the night, bring in the gecko. Strike opposed gecko. There you go. Guys tend to get a little upset when they get crowded. It's our job as starters to make sure they know that that's our part of the plates. And then Salt Lamaki is saying, look, I've, that's automatic. You get out there. And Desmond actually said, I respect, know Jared and respect him. And actually, I, I wouldn't respect him if he didn't get between us. He said, hey, no, no hard feelings. It's baseball. We turn the page and play tomorrow. And I think they also understood that uh, in the game last night, Tom Kohler was effectively wild. He walked five uh, in giving up just the one base hit in his seven innings. So all three professionals, and they handled it that way. Desmond check swing at a high pitch. Rob Drake says he swung. So a strikeout, Jose's first in his 24th of the season. Tough to lay off that high fastball. He just committed enough. I think he knew it. He didn't want to look up. He, he didn't want to look up, but he knew it. So the Nationals now with Espinosa up. If you've just joined us, Bryce Harper, a late scratch from the lineup. No injury has been given. Dietrich had that one clang off of his forearm racing around first as Espinosa into second and he's in there with a slide. Tough tough play for Dietrich probably going to be a double for Espinosa. Yeah w without question I would say a double hard shot it came up a little bit. I tell you what Derek Dietrich's had some tough balls in, out his way the last few days. This one skipped by him and uh, credit Espinosa with not hesitating and thinking double as soon as he saw that ball skip into shallow center field. Double all the way. Tyler Moore, who came into the lineup in place of Harper, hitting in the seventh spot. So no Harper. No Ryan Zimmerman and no Denard Spann. Though they hope Spann will be back by the weekend. Obviously Zimmerman with the broken thumb is out about a month. Spann on the seven day concussion list. Matt Williams hopeful to get him back this weekend. As Tommy detailed a weekend meeting with the Cardinals. Here's a 1-1. There's the second curveball that he's thrown. He threw one the second pitch to Desmond. Right at the letters and right on the black. Counts one and two. Breaking ball, fly ball, left field. Yelich is back, is there, and he makes the catch. Fernandez pitches around the double. We're still scoreless.
Miami. Seattle's coming here. The Mariners for a weekend series. Yeah, you know them, you love them. It's the Moose. Fireworks Friday starts it on the 18th at 7:10. So stay in your seats for after the game. Incredible fireworks display. Marlins.com for tickets. Seattle is in Texas tonight, where the matchup is a, a great one. King Felix against you, Darvish. And Garrett Jones takes a fastball outside. It's funny how King Felix and Jose are both pitching on the same night. So had the schedule been a little different, this might have been a Jose Fernandez, Felix Hernandez matchup. How about that? Yeah, that uh, that would have been terrific. The the folks in Texas get that uh, premier matchup with King Felix and Yu Darvish. King Felix is three and zero with a two eleven ERA. Yu Darvish one and zero has not given up an earned run. Jones swings and fouls it at the plate. Let's scout Tanner Roark. All right, what's the uh, scouting report say for the 27 year old? Low 90s, has some sink to it. His curve not quite up to 12 to 12 to 6, 11 to 5. His changeup, we've seen him throw a couple of nice ones. Fastball pop foul and out of play. Here's a pop quiz. Speaking of pop fouls. All right. Who leads the Marlins in walks? Walks drawn. Well, you're asking me the question with Garrett Jones up to the plate, so uh, you're giving it away. I'm a good teammate. Here's the one two. Breaking ball, ground ball. The Roach vacuums up everything his way, and he gets that one easily. Yeah, the Marlins, he was looking today at, at just raw numbers, and obviously, it hasn't been a, a ton of games, 15 games. But the middle of the lineup, Jones, McGee, and Saltalamakia. Are the three guys that have been on base by walks the most? Look at that. You got McGee and Saltalamaki at seven and Jones at eight. So, what you're saying is uh, Giancarlo has been getting a lot of opportunities and seeing pitches to hit. One of the reasons he leads the major leagues in RBIs. Here's McGee now. And I think with the eight game losing streak, all of a sudden it's. The sky is falling and it's 2013 all over again. But if you dredge up the numbers from last year, as painful as they are, they're in stark contrast to what the Marlins have done this year. Last year, the Marlins were historically bad 231 average, 293 on base, 335 slugging. So far this year, 273 average, 340. On base, 413 slugging percentage. That is an enormous jump. Yeah, and by the way, that 273 batting average, third in the National League, is uh, play is entered tonight. Now, can they keep that pace up? We will see. One, two to McGee. Bouncer to short. Busy night already for Desmond. And he fires him out. Two down. And before Salt Lamakia digs in. America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, every game with America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1, which was enhanced last night by an appearance of Tommy Hutton. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go as well. Tune in. America's pregame weeknight, 6 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your cable satellite provider, go to FoxSports1.com. Here is Salt Lamakia. Two for eight with a double in the series. And Roark was throwing well tonight. This is outside. I put uh, Tanner Roark in kind of the Tom Kohler category. The 25th round draft pick of the Rangers. He he put up and he had to. He put up Really good numbers in the minor leagues. One year in Bakersfield in 2009, 29 games, nine starts. He was 10 and 0, so he's always had to prove himself. And here he is. He's always been kind of a swing guy too. You look at his minor league, he pitch out of the bullpen, he'd start some games. Well, he's part of a rotation that is very, very good. You noted that. 
The Nationals are going to see Wainwright, Waka, Lynn, and Miller in that Cardinals series, but they're going to counter with Taylor Jordan, Gio Gonzalez, Jordan Zimmerman, and Steven Strasburg. That one missed someplace. It looked like a pretty good pitch. You can see Lobaton drop his head, and it was. It caught a pretty good piece of the outside part. The Marlins will take the break. Salta Lamaki is at first, and here's Derek Dietrich. The first base runner against Tanner Roark tonight. The next time Giancarlo Stanton gets to the plate, we want a little CSI Marlins Park after last night's ball game, Tommy Hutton. I mean, we all thought and knew that he hit another one of his uh, prodigious blasts, but we did. We have found out uh, even more. We called the guy with the red hair on CSI. He came in and did a little investigating, interrogating. Turned it over to the lab. Dietrich swings and misses. The count is 0 2. Dietrich had a pair of two run homers on the road trip. The Marlins losing all six on the trip. Hit one in Philly, hit one in D.C. Misses away. A lot of games already finished today. Wednesday can be a travel day, so you have a lot of early games depending on where the club is headed. The Mets in Arizona beat Arizona 5 to 2. The Mets are over 500. They're at 8 and 7. How about Arizona's record? Not so good. 4 and 14. How about Milwaukee's record? They beat St. Louis 5 to 1. Brewers are now 11 and 4. There was some uh, well pitched games in some of those afternoon games, too. Masahiro Tanaka pitched one of those games as the Yankees shut out the Cubs 3 to nothing. Johnny Cueto pitched one of those games as the Reds shut out the Pirates 4 to nothing. Cueto's 1 and 2, but his ERA is a buck and a half. 2 2. And that one just missed. So Dietrich down 0 and 2 in the count has worked it back to 3 and 2. That's a good job by the young hitter. We've seen a lot of pitchers because they know Derek Dietrich has some pop. And he likes the ball down. A lot of pitchers have tried to work him up, especially when they use that fastball. Did a very tight strike zone for Clint Fagan. You saw that last pitch also caught part of the zone. And so Saltalamaki got a break and Dietrich gets a break. Echeverria is on deck. Runner on the move. And Dietrich skies it in the air to left. Tyler Moore is under it, and he makes the catch. Marlins leave a runner. Two innings in. No score in Miami tonight.
scoreless in the third. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Rich, uh, let me tell you something. Bring your K cards here. No, you can get them when you're part of Jose's Heroes. Thank you very much. Uninvited guest here to the show. We'll get to you. Your season ticket holder here, and you're part of Jose's Heroes. And you're not wearing a Mariner's color. No. <laughs> no. Tell me about it. It's a great deal. $6 season tickets. You get a different shirt every month. And then if you're individually, like tonight, if you just want to go for the one game, $16, you get a white shirt. But tell me how, what attracted you guys to this. Well, these seats are amazing. I mean, this park is, uh, is great. Any seat you go to, you got a great view. But these seats, you have a really cool perspective on the field. And you get to see all the players up close also. So we really like this point of view from the stadium. As a Jose Hero, you don't want to catch a ball that was pitched by Jose. Is that correct? That's right. We'll send it back to the field. <laughs> That's for sure if it gets here. Yeah. Strangely, you haven't been able to use your K card yet. No, not yet. We're, I have, I'm very optimistic, though, for tonight. All right. It's a great, really a great deal. Again, the season ticket is $6 a game. And it is the night Jose pitches. You get one color shirt every month. If individually, 16 bucks. You look for it when he's pitching. You can go online, buy the ticket for Jose. Charles, you get the card, and you get a shirt. Pretty good deal, guys. And, and he's right. It is a very unique view. You almost feel like you're hanging over the field out here. Uh, what about the giant heads that are four rows behind yes. you? These are real heroes up here. Stand up, heroes. There we go. We got, got Jose, Superman. They got Stanton. They Captain got Captain America. Shazam is here. This guy here. All right, buddy. We got a Philly fan who doesn't realize he's not a superhero. And we got this knucklehead over here too. You better go back to you. <laughs> All right, Greg. Thanks. You sound like a, a King Felix fan out there amongst the uh, the group. Breaking ball and Roark takes it. Second strikeout for Jose. And up to Nate McLeod. As the Marlins and the Nationals finish off a three game series. And the Marlins finally getting off the uh, losing skid, an eight game streak, which was punctuated by big home runs. In Philadelphia, Jimmy Rollins' walk off shot, Chase Utley's game winner, the Jason Worth Grand Slam, the Ian Desmond Grand Slam. Yeah, and oddly enough, Rich, the Marlins themselves have hit some home runs. They've homered in seven straight games. McLeod into center field. A lot of fly ball outs off the bat of Jose Fernandez, who was cruising through three. Best fan photo using the hashtag FL fan photo for a chance to have your photo shown in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Here at Marlins Park tonight, the Marlins and the Nationals. And both pitchers are sharp. 
Neither team is threatened much. Danny Echeverria, Jose Fernandez, Christian Yelich, 8 9 1 in Miami's order. Tanner Roark, who has one uh, nice start, one not so nice start on his season. He beat the Mets on the road. He lost to the Braves on the road. Gave up five runs in four and two thirds innings against Atlanta. Edge tries to bunt and fouls it off. I think one of the interesting notes on uh, Roark is that uh, Fangraphs deemed him the king of called strikes. It's a lot of called strikes. So when you read that, you go, okay, why? My first thought was he's got a little deception in, in the delivery, and that's part of it. But in talking to Frank Menachino, the Marlins hitting instructor, he said a lot of times you'll see him just drop a get me over curveball for strike one. Kind of fools guys right off the bat. He's been terrific from the first pitch to Christian Yelich. And now he gets a Danny Echevarria. He's not giving up a hit, eight men in. Jose Fernandez is up with Yelich on deck. If the Marlins can win this ball game, they can move to seven and nine. Off day tomorrow. Seattle here on Friday night. Nationals would like to stretch their record to nine and six if they could before they're home to face the Cardinals. Chris Young, not the center fielder, but the uh, Princeton Tiger. Big tall right hander back in the game. Good to see him healthy. He starts for Seattle on Friday night, and Nathan Evaldi gets the ball for Miami. A lot of years of shoulder issues. Remember, Young also hit in the face with a line drive. 2 0 pitch. Shatters his bat and Rendon throws him out. Roark has made some tremendous pitches. He's getting ground ball outs. Jose's getting fly ball outs. And a reminder that this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Marlins, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Six of the eight outs that he's recorded have been on the ground. And he's doing it against a, a Marlins lineup. We were talking about the the batting average overall. There's a get me over curveball, but he missed with it. The the eight hitters in the lineup tonight, excluding Jose, collectively are hitting 300 for the Marlins. Well, you called him the king of the called strike. Tonight he's been the king of the jam shot. Yeah, and the ground ball out. Ian Desmond has had three ground balls out at short, all of them jam shots. Fernandez just shattered his bat. Yelich takes a fastball away. Well, he's only pitched uh, about 66, 67 innings in the major leagues, but he's only allowed a couple of home runs. That uh, gives you a little indication of the kind of stuff he has. It's a walk, and so Yelich is aboard. Second walk by Roark, and here comes Marcelo Zuna. They get a feel for a game like this. I'm sure both managers have it now, Matt Williams and Mike Redmond. And your feel is, you got to scrape and scrap and try to get a run, try to get on the scoreboard because both pitchers appear to be on their game. Ozuna bounced to Desmond out at short. So you might see a Christian Yelich. Think about a stolen base getting into scoring position with a couple of outs. Yelich has yet to be caught. Not only this year, but in his career. He was picked off earlier this year. And sometimes the guy can get picked off and it goes as a caught stealing if he starts towards second and then 
gets picked off from there. Breaking ball strike. And Ozuna finds himself behind in the count 0 and 2. A couple of things with the count 0 and 2. If you're Yelich, you, you might think about going, but they can pitch out 0 and 2. But they also may try to bury a curveball in the dirt. That would be a good pitch to go on. Ozuna in the right field, base hit. Yelich will stop there. And that'll bring Stanton to the plate with runners first and second. Now, he had runners at first and second last night in his first at bat, and he homered to center. And we all thought it just landed in the bushes. But watch this ball. Look at that, that sign right there where it says radio right on the A. Right on the A is where this ball is going to hit. It hits that A on radio and drops down into the. Little flower bed out there plants Ivy. 457 feet. So Stanton who takes a strike. Has hit three of the four longest home runs in baseball this year. His 484 foot shot over the Budweiser bar in this ballpark is the longest. Breaking ball, ground ball. Desmond backs up, bobbles, but gets the out. And Roark still hasn't given up a run. And he's hanging in there against Jose. Starting to work up the, the stain on his pants from the dirt. Rubs that hand in the dirt. He does not like to use the rosin bag. Growing up in Cuba, they didn't have rosin bags. So he learned to use the dirt. He still hasn't grown accustomed to the bag. He just stays with the dirt. Anthony Rendon takes a fastball up and in. Rendon, Jason Worth, Adam LaRoche in the fourth for the Nationals in a scoreless ball game. Both teams have just a hit. From just the three innings worth of work, Tommy Hutton, what's the difference between Jose Fernandez tonight and in his last start? Well, we can't see his uh, standing tall a little bit. We, we also, I think I used the term, look like he was pitching with his hair on fire in, in Philadelphia. He was all over the place, and he, he seems much more reserved, compact, relaxed in this one tonight. 
sharp breaking ball. And down goes Rendon. Now it really becomes a challenge for the Nationals hitters if this one starts to work. Because remember, through the first three innings, mostly fastballs, a few of the curveballs. Now worth. Worth hit a, a screaming liner into the glove of Derek Dietrich out at second base to end the first. Remember that was on a 3 1 pitch. He'd gotten himself in a count where he knew he was going to get that Fernandez fastball and worth with a good swing, but Dietrich was able to spear it. Reports are that it was a left quad for Bryce Harper. Tightness about an hour prior to first pitch tonight. That goes back to that play the other night after he doubled on a ground ball. He almost started to go to third, and then he kind of stumbled and fell and, and made it back to second base and uh, kind of tweaked it, I believe, at that point there. But he played the next night, but sitting out this one. Speaking of tweaks, there's a look at Harper. Logan Morrison placed on the 15 day disabled list with a, a hamstring issue. Nick Franklin called up by Seattle. Swing and a miss. Worth goes down. Jose is heating up. Time to tune in and settle down. He goes with the fastball, but much better location and command of that fastball tonight. He seems to be throwing with much more of an ease. Yes, and still 96 and 97. Adam LaRoche. This is one of those games when he gets back in the dugout, there'll be guys in the dugout saying, just get him one. That's all he needs. The Espinosa double off the arm of Dietrich, the only hit tonight. Got him. Jose Fernandez strikes out the side in the fourth. Fish Nationals scoreless. Marlins baseball on Fox Sports Florida brought to you by Acura and your local Acura dealer by checkers visit your local checkers for the two dollar shrimp and fries box and by Mitsubishi Mitsubishi Motors invites you to find your own lane in Miami tonight Jose Fernandez is dealing 
the young ace of the Miami Marlins struck out the side in the top of this inning and here in the bottom of the fourth Tanner Roark to Garrett Jones and Roark has been just as effective though not as dominant he's walked a couple gave up an Ozuna single Jones McGee Salta La Macchia for the fish. Yeah, we talked about Roark seven of the nine outs now that he's recorded have been on the ground. He had a pretty good start. His only other start, he appeared in a couple of games, but his only other start against the Marlins was last September. Right here at Marlins Park, Washington scored nine runs. He won that game nine to two. He went six innings, gave up four hits, no runs, and didn't walk anybody. Jones reaches down. I don't know how he hit that ball into right field. He somehow hooked it and dumps it into right for a leadoff hit. Hey, Major League Baseball, People Magazine, and Target are looking for outstanding teachers in your community. 30 teachers will be celebrated at the 2014 All Star Game July 15th on Fox. Log on to allstarteachers.com to nominate your favorite teacher today. Mike Hill, Marlins uh, president of baseball operations, and his 11th grade English teacher here, and his high school football and baseball coach. I talked briefly with uh, Mike about that, and he said what a thrill it was for him to be able to do that on a night when Jackie Robinson was being honored around baseball. Hill was a two sport star at Harvard going from the Country Day High School in Cincinnati. McGee awaits, 0 1 pitch comes. And it's in, it's a ball and a strike. So two hits, both singles. Ozuna and Garrett Jones. Casey McGee knocked in a couple runs last night. The Marlins a, a big night offensively. Led by Giancarlo Stanton's five RBIs. McGee with his three hits knocked in two. The 1 1. It's well, out. Certainly production between Giancarlo and Casey McGee. 34 RBIs between the two of them. That's more than any duo in the major leagues. And it's also the most RBIs by a pair of Marlins through 15 games ever. McGee up the middle into center field. That's a base hit. And Miami has runners first and second. Nobody out. Bottom of the fourth. Here comes Salta Lamonti. Good solid approach. Right on that ball. Shot. And even with the, the double play combination cheating a little bit, Espinosa cheating toward the bank. He still couldn't get to that ball. It was hit so sharply. Well, you look at McGee at first and Jones out at second. And remember that first base and third base were black holes last year in terms of production. McGee is hitting over 300. He's already knocked in 13 runs. Jones has two homers, has driven in eight runs. Salta Lamacchia poised now and takes inside. That's already been a, a huge upgrade to the Marlins. With the two guys on the corners, and even with Salta Lamacchia behind the plate. Well, it was such a rough go last year for the youngster, for Rob Brantley. Who, by the way, had a five for five night the other night for New Orleans. Good pitching duel here. Good pitching duel in Philly. Julio Tehran against Cliff Lee. Jam shot and a fly ball. More. And there's one out that will bring Derek Dietrich up. Now 
like Tehran has pitched three no hit innings against the Phillies in Philly. Evan Gaddis has homered for the only run of the ball game. Boy, he's off to a hot start. He's got four home runs. Four for him now. One to Dietrich, couple hits in this series. Wild swings of momentum in this series. Nine to two Washington on Monday, eleven to two Miami last night. Dietrich, right field, that's deep, and it's gone. Federal Express, next day delivery, three run shot. Wow, the kids got some pop. I couldn't wait to see what that was going to hit. And you're right, FedEx Express. And a three run shot. That is huge. Boy, out over the plate. Roark hasn't made too many mistakes. Guys are having better swings uh, this time around. They're, they're seeing that fastball. And Chavaria left center. And it's run down by McLeod. All right, back to Dietrich's blast. He knew it when it left the bat. This is why Derek Dietrich is here. He has incredible pop and great tools. 102 miles an hour off the bat. And off the FedEx sign facing of the second deck out in right center field. That's got to be about a 430, 440 foot home run. Hut. I would say so. Eight straight games now for the Marlins hitting a home run. And I'll be honest, I'll tell you, around batting practice, I know everybody will say the one guy they want to see hit is, is Giancarlo. The next guy I want to watch is Dietrich. He hits some balls deep in BP. Three home runs already for Dietrich. Eight RBIs as well. And for the former Georgia Tech shortstop, this is just his ninth game of the season. Boy, when you can get some pop like that and production out of your second baseman, boy, what a bonus that is. The other thing that's really different about this team compared to last year, and again, it's just a 15 to 16 game sample. Production at the bottom of the order. I mean, Echeverria's hitting over 300. Dietrich in the seven spot tonight. Already three home runs. In fact, three home runs in the last week. You got a guy like Salta Lamacchia, who is your number six hitter. That's a deep, deep lineup. I mean, the Marlins lineup was as shallow as they come last year. Before Stanton and after Stanton. There were a lot of easy innings for opposing pitchers. Strike three call. Jose goes down. But Dietrich goes deep. I mean, real deep. Upper tank. Right center deep. A three-run shot. And a three-nothing lead.
shot in the arm last night, and it is tonight. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice at bat right there. Give the guys credit uh, in front of them for getting on base. Jones, he got down uh, early in the count and, and uh, didn't hit it uh, really hard, but hit it in the right spot. And uh, Casey uh, McGee, nice at bat, and, and Deet uh, finished it off. So uh, that's good. We, we, uh, we feel good about that. Hey, Red, what, in, in your eyes, what do you see differently tonight in Jose than in his last start in Philadelphia? Well, he just I think he looks sharper. Uh, I think you can tell his, his uh, fastball is coming out of his hand better. His, his uh, breaking ball command is, is solid and uh, just need to keep him go going out there and grinding it out. Skip, thanks for the visit. Good luck. All right, guys, thanks. Mike Redman joining us. Derek Dietrich with a long three-run homer, 3-0 three Marlins. During the break, we spoke with skipper Mike Redman. Skip, thanks for joining us. It's amazing what a three-run homer will do for a ball club. It yeah. was a big shot in the arm last night, and it is tonight. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice at bat right there. Give the guys credit uh, in front of them for getting on base. Jones, he got down uh, early in the count and, and uh, didn't hit it uh, really hard, but hit it in the right spot. And uh, Casey uh, McGee, nice at bat, and, and Deet uh, finished it off. So uh, that's good. We, we, uh, we feel good about that. Hey, Red, what, in, in your eyes, what do you see differently tonight in Jose than in his last start in Philadelphia? Well, he just I think he looks sharper. Uh, I think you can tell that his uh, fastball is coming out of his hand better. His, his uh, breaking ball command is, is solid and uh, just need to keep him go going out there and grinding it out. Skip, thanks for the visit. Good luck. All right, guys, thanks. Mike Redman joining us. And Desmond takes inside. And so, as you noted, sometimes on a night like this, a guy like Jose Fernandez just needs one run. He's got three runs to work with. There's still some thunder in that Nationals order, even though Harper scratched from the lineup. And, of course, Zimmerman is out as well. I just got squeezed again. This is a small zone for Clint Fagan, the young umpire. That was a pretty good pitch, and I think Jose knew it. 3-1. Fastball, fly ball, right center. Hit a long ways. Ozuna on the track makes the catch. <laughs> Seattle's coming to town. Miami and the Mariners go at it on a Friday night. Make sure you tune in early for Marlins Live pregame interleague matchup. We'll chat with Mike Redman, the team that Mike Redman grew up watching as a kid. He'll tell you about Lou Pinella and Ken Griffey Jr., Jay Buhner, and those great Mariner teams. Red grew up in the state of Washington, went to high school in Spokane. Probably grew up listening to the great Hall of Famer Dave Niehaus. Danny Espinoza doubled in the second. His uh, double was there's a change up by the way. I think it's the first time he's broken that one out. His double was a line drive up the middle on a hop that skipped off the arm of Dietrich. And there's your change up. This is called a power change up because this change up ranges from 88 to 90. Dietrich sliding, pops up, makes the play. Nicely done. And he got the ball to Jones so quickly it, it even handcuffed Jones at first. I like the quick decision also by Garrett Jones at first. He knew where his second baseman was and got to first base. He didn't wander over thinking he could make that play. And Dietrich with a beauty. Jones just did get the bag too. Here is Tyler Moore. Fernandez with two outs here in the fifth and he's sitting at just 54 pitches. Well, we talked about some of the pitching uh, today in baseball. Uh, Masahiro Tanaka with the Yankees eight shutout innings at 10 strikeouts gave up just two hits and they were bunt singles to the Cubs. One thing Fernandez has not known is thrown a complete game. 
And near the end of last year, that became a goal of his. He realized that striking out a dozen to 15 guys, yeah, that's that's all well and good. But if he could get early outs, he would have a better shot at throwing a complete game. 58 pitches into this one. Jose Fernandez has given up just one hit. Five. Jose Fernandez is shutting out the Nationals. The Marlins have a three run homer from second baseman Derek Dietrich. They've got the top of their order up against Tanner Roar. Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, and yes, Giancarlo Stanton. Marlins finally getting to Roar in the fourth. Garrett Jones, Casey McGee with singles before the Dietrich homer. So Roark with two strikeouts, two walks in four innings. Jose Fernandez, six strikeouts and no walks. Sudden after all those left handers the Marlins saw early in the year, they've seen a nice string of right handed pitching. One, two, and Yelich swings and misses third strikeout for Roark. Marlins Mariners Saturday spectacular at 710 all you can eat seats twenty seven dollars after the game head to the East Plaza for a party at the Clevelander live music entertainment and more for Marlins.com for tickets. Zuda takes down low. Ball and a strike. With the off day tomorrow, Miami, at least Mike Redman, Chuck Hernandez, are toying with the idea of shortening the rotation. The fish on Sunday. 
right now Brad Hand it's his turn. There is some talk that Kevin Slowey might take that start. And the Marlins have another off day a week from tomorrow between their series in Atlanta and New York. Thus they could get by with a four man rotation for about what about 10 days which uh, it's not a huge sample size because for Jose Fernandez he's only been in the big leagues now. Ozuna clobbers that one in the gap and he's going to go to the wall. He's thinking three. He's not going to get there. He stops and reverses. He gets back to second. Well, a good decision and continued solid hitting by Marcelo Zuna who had a four hit night last night. There's the hanger. He hammers it into left center. This play you have in front of you. You don't really have to utilize the third base coach. So Ozuna saw the play, saw the relay come in, handled uh, very nicely, and decided to hold up in a good decision. But the point I was trying to make in in 14 starts in Jose Fernandez's young career, he's had that extra day's rest, and he's actually four and four with an ERA over three. He's pitched better when he's gone on his normal every five days. Here is Stanton. First base is open. Nationals walked him intentionally last night. It's actually the first time he'd been walked intentionally this year. And, and there's a situation where he, he may have out fought himself and he took a fastball that was right there. Pretty good pitch to hit. That, you know what that happened a lot last year yes. in April and May and with good reason he didn't have help in front of him or behind him. And in the center field, Roark airmails it, and Ozuna scampers to third. And that certainly changes Stanton's at bat. And picked off play on Espinosa sneaking to the bag, but Roark, who, who was a quarterback in high school in Illinois, oh. took his high school team to two state championships, overthrew the receiver there. Infield in reluctantly against Stanton. And a fastball in. Ball and a strike. That's like a nightmare infielders have. They, they hear hear their manager or one of their coaches yell, Stanton's a hitter, infield in. Are they less likely to pitch to him now with a runner at third? Now he came after him. Now that he has two strikes on him, you know, they, they think they can get him out. So he has to be ready. And this uh, is an area that we've seen Stan be much better in this year. 429 runners in scoring position. He, he hasn't done it all on home runs. Doesn't need one here. Ozuna's at third infields in. Roark away with it, and it's two and two. Chased. Down he goes. Big strikeout for the Nationals. Once he got that two strikes on him, he wasn't really going to give him anything that had the plate. And he got Stanton to chase his slider. Jones pops it up. Desmond's out. McLeod is in. Desmond calls and makes the catch. Marlins leave a runner at third. We played five, three nothing. Fish.
Fernandez is dealing, Rich Waltz and Tommy Hunt. I did a little shopping today at the team store. Robin Feinstein was uh, nice enough to give us a little goodie bag, and look at the cap that Tommy came up with. I, I, I like this. I think they'll find me uh, on the golf course at uh, Jupiter Country Club with this. This is one Easy. of the new caps down there. This is the one that uh, I picked out. That's Very a nice cool. one, too. Now, the other thing they've got going, Hut, is we'll watch Jose throw this uh, first pitch. They have caps down at the Marlins team store, school color caps. Look at this. This is a Florida yep. State Seminole cap. Okay. FIU cap. Central Florida cap. And for John Solcer, our producer, <laughs> there it is. The Gator Marlins cap. So Those these are, are the, sweet. These are the four schools that uh, Major League Baseball has an agreement with. Four schools from around Florida. You can get the colors at the Marlins team store. And uh, pretty slick. And so... Uh, we thank Robin, not only for her uh, goodie bags, but also uh, check out the team store when you come to the ballpark. They've got a, a ton of great new merchandise, and it's moving quickly and, and cool stuff. I mean, just cool stuff. The only way our producer, John Solcer, would agree to show the caps was if we waited and unveiled the Gator one at the end. Well, the Gator cap was hitting cleanup. We hope our friends in Tallahassee appreciated the Florida State cap. That we let off with that one. And FIU and Central Florida look good, too. That one off the warning track and off the wall. And Jose Lobaton has got himself a double. So second hit issued by Jose Fernandez. He hasn't made very many mistakes at all. This breaking ball didn't quite have the sharpness to it. Lobaton didn't hit it all that well. Got it, I think, a little bit off the end of the bat. But Stanton was covering him over in the in the gap. He got that ball down the line. Here's Roark. And we'll see if the Nationals try to push the runner up. He drops down the bunt. Salkulavakia looks at third, throws it wide of the bag, and McGee did well enough just to smother the ball and keep it from going down the left field line. A gamble certainly by Salta Lamakia, and it doesn't pay off. Yeah, this bunt doesn't get out to the grass, so that the choice was a good one by Salta Lamakia. The throw was not, and he knows that as well as anybody. You know, I think in a situation like that, the score... I believe dictated what Salta Lamacchia did. He knows his pitcher, his young guy has a shutout going. He's thinking about getting that lead runner as opposed to, at this part of the game, getting a sure out at first base. But he still had a sure out if he made a good throw to third. You know, they have given Salta Lamacchia an error, but I don't know that they can do that, actually. It's not a force play. It's a tag play. There is a sacrifice, but the E2, you, you can't give both because the sacrifice implies you move the runner over. And you can't give an error on that because that, uh, uh, by by definition, allows the runner to get to third. So it's either one or the I other. I would have thought sacrifice fielder's choice. Right. I mean, if, it, if it's E2, then, then there's no sacrifice. If there's a sacrifice, then there's no E2. That was the extent of my pre-law studies in college. That's why I ended up as a broadcaster. Lobaton at third base. And Roark is over at first. Nate McLeod at the plate. He's fly to center twice. McLeod takes a strike. Jose Fernandez with his ball game has struck out six. Hasn't walked anybody. But he knows that Jason Worth, Anthony Rendon, Adam LaRoche, Ian Desmond are right around the bend and that this could become a big inning. Yeah, and he has to think about outs here. He can't worry himself too much about the runner at third base. Swing and a miss. He gets McLeod. Hernandez, seven strikeouts. Looks sharp. Let's check in with Craig Vinderby.
Rich, thank you very much. Anthony Rendon coming up here, one of the top picks for the Nationals in recent years. In fact, both clubs have gotten great dividends from their top picks. You know, the Marlins had a long run of not getting much for the top pick, not recently. Strasburg, Harper out tonight. Rendon, top picks for Washington last few years, 09, 10, 11. Yelich in this game, got the 10-game hit streak going. Jose Fernandez, of course. And don't forget about Andrew Heaney, who threw 6-4 shutout innings for AA Jacksonville. He's got a streak of 12 now, scoreless innings. And uh, he had a good run, of course, in spring training, pitching very well. Three starts, he's got a 1-5-6 ERA for the AA Suns. So that's good dividends for your top picks pretty quickly, too, for both clubs. And the Nationals made hay certainly when they were miserable and ended up with the first overall picks. And back to back, they took Steven Strasburg and Bryce Harper. But you know, some of their other picks, guys like Desmond, Rendon, and, and his power is a fastball by Rendon. Yeah, right now, Jose is thinking strikeout. By the way, Andrew Heaney last night, six innings, one hit, no runs for Jacksonville in Chattanooga. They have changed the scoring on that fielder's choice, E2. So no sacrifice for Roar. 0 2 pitch. It's just out. It's 1 and 2. And there's a little bit of rosin bag. Fernandez will go to it on occasion. Two balls, two strikes. I think you and I both agree Anthony Rendon is going to be around a while. Sixth overall pick out of Rice University. Popped up. Let's see if it's playable. Salta Lamaca to the screen. Drops it. Boy, a tough half inning for Jared Salta Lamacchia. Mm. Not an easy play, got right near the screen, but it was certainly there for him to grab. He's trying to think about all kinds of things, but in and out of the mid. And it's going to be another error for Jared Salta Lamacchia. He actually was right on in estimating where the Padding was you can see he never lost sight of the ball. You count your steps once you hit the warning track. And just as he leaned over, that railing was coming up to him. Pop up, Dietrich's out. And he makes the catch. Yeah, no harm, no foul so far. Fernandez certainly, though, a lot more stressful inning. If you're looking in the long term, short term, he's got to get Jason Worth to get out unscathed. Nice, uh, nice exchange by the youngster and the veteran. When Jose on that pop fly, he went back to back up home plate. When he walked past Salta Lamacchia, a little tap, said, okay, don't worry about it. Worth takes a strike. A line drive out and down swinging in the fourth. Right center field. That ball's well hit. Back goes Stanton. Track looks up and it is off the top of the wall. It will be reviewed. That may be a home run. Worth goes into his trot, and I think the Nationals may have tied this game. There was a fan that leaned over and made contact that looked like, or the ball bounced off the railing, which is above the wall. But Jason Worth ties this game. Mike Redman is out, and he's going to ask for a review here. Well, the initial call by the first base umpire, Rob Drake, who 
was at probably the best angle of any of the umpires was home run. But the crew chief Joe West will come in now and talk to, to Red and to Rob Drake. They'll say, hey, let's go, let's make sure, let's go take a look at this. And of course the errors by Salt to Lamachia are magnified here. Here's our first look at it. Boy, worth with opposite field power. We've seen that over the years. Well, you know what? The fan does touch it. The umpires have to decide whether it would go out without the fan touching it. And from there, uh, boy, I don't know if there's conclusive evidence to overturn the call. It appears that the fan touched it over the fence, and they're not going to waste much time. The call stands. And once again, damage done by Jason Worth. He's done a lot of that over the years, but you're right, a messy inning with a couple of errors. So Worth, a big blow for the Nationals, his third home run. And opposite field as well, Tommy. If we focus on the fan reaching over and and the contact being made, that is a long way to go for a right-handed hitter in this ballpark. Uh, but, and that's the quickest uh, review, the home run review, umpire groups, two sets of uh, umpiring crews in New York had a look at it. I would expect they'd looked at it before the umpires even got to the headsets. Now Jose has to get back into that easy delivery mode. Tough to do in this situation. Boy, and what new life now for the Washington Nationals who have a terrific back end of their bullpen. With Storin, Clippert, and Soriano. They're dead even now, 3 3 on a night where Jose Fernandez seemingly had his A game going. LaRoche sends one into left center field. That's a base hit. Well, Chuck Hernandez, Marlins pitching coach, uh, sees that he needs to just calm his 21 year old down a little bit. Got a hitter stepping in who he knows has power. Ian Desmond has three home runs this year. home run Jason Worth had been uh, 0 for 7 against Jose big swing by Desmond takes Jones to the rail that's into the seats well in Miami's eight game losing streak the Marlins saw an awful lot of that an awful lot of take a lead, get into the second half of the ball game, give up a big home run. Worth had the grand slam. Desmond hit a grand slam. Harper hit a three run homer. Worth had a two run homer in that Desmond game. Runner goes, huge jump, breaking ball, straight three called, and down goes Desmond. Jason Worth and a couple of errors, and just like that, Washington. Is even at three.
tied up Jason Worth with a home run to right center field. Saturday, Major League Baseball on Fox Sports 1 is back. Doubleheader, Mike Trout and the Angels take on reigning AL MVP Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers. And the Diamondbacks square off against the Dodgers. The action starts 12.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Anna Roark and the Nationals even at three. McGee bounces one up the middle. Desmond gathers it in and throws him out. By the way, Mike Trout, Trout not uh, holding back this year already with five home runs. Tied for the American League lead with Jose Bautista with the Blue Jays. There's a lot of things to think about right now in a 3 3 game. Certainly. The man coming to the plate has a few of those on his mind. That throwing air at third and the drop pop up. Now Fernandez did get Rendon out after Salta Lamaque dropped the pop up, but it's still not an easy feeling for the catcher. The other has to be you go back to the Marlins and the opportunity they had in the fifth inning with Giancarlo Stanton at the plate and Marcelo Zuna at third base. Stanton struck out. Marlins didn't get that extra run, and now the game is tied. This is Earl Weaver's dream. A pair of three run homers. The late Earl Weaver. Smacked into center field by Salta Lamacchia. And here comes Dietrich. Who powered one out off the facing of the upper deck in right center field? Well, remember, too, Dietrich hit that one off Jordan Zimmerman at National Spark. I think you've got this one a little bit more as you described. Special delivery, FedEx Express. Next day delivery. That was immediate delivery. That might have been uh, same day delivery. Is the corner. Lawson Detweiler getting loose in that Nationals bullpen. <laughs> Count even to two and two. Danny Echeverria to follow. That one right at the knees. Boy, the other thing with a couple of errors, they they built that pitch count up a little bit for Jose. He finished a six. Right now he's at 84 pitches. Breaking ball, and Dietrich got a piece of it. At least he thought he had a piece of it. And the home plate umpire, Clint Fagan, said no, he didn't. Here comes Mike Redmond now. It's been a rough night for the young umpire behind the plate. Looked like the ball changed directions. That's really a, a call an umpire makes on, on hearing. This is not reviewable. I don't know. I think he missed it. Let's listen, see if he there's a tip. Well, the ball I think hit the glove and then the shin guard. I, I think Dietrich flat out missed it. 
what threw Redmond off is that Lobaton missed it. There were two sounds. Yeah. And it was glove and shin guard. So Echeverria now with two outs. So Clint Fagan was all over that call. Now you can review or challenge if the ball hits the batter. And Chavaria, right center field, McLeod and Worth. And it's Worth who makes the catch. The Nationals and the Marlins have traded three run homers in a 3 3 game. Jose Fernandez and the Marlins stunned by Jason Worth's three run homer. I would expect Raul you were uh, you were stunned as well. Actually I, I, I had some prophetic words I had said you got to be careful with this guy because with one swing he can uh, tie it up and sure enough I didn't think he would do it but um, he got enough of it and his three home runs this year have been against the Marlins unfortunately. Yeah you're right he had the uh, the two in D.C. including the Grand Slam and a two run shot against Tom Kohler. How many of those are earned runs guys uh, after the error by uh, Salta La Macchia earlier on. In un initially they were posted as earned but they recalculated or recalibrated apparently. <laughs> and uh, now none of them are earned. I never never really grasped the entire concept there of the, the earned run. Sometimes I get confused. Well, the error third on the punt, which was originally ruled a sacrifice, and an E2 was turned into a fielder's choice, which I think oh, okay. they're assuming that had that been an out, that Worth never would have come to the plate. Jose would have been in getting a drink. Yep. And thus, the runs are unearned. He was cruising up until then, too. And um, I think he had like, what, 10 guys in a row out until the double by Lobaton. Yeah, and this is uh, this is a point in time where he really has to to work here in this seventh inning too. He's got eight strikeouts, but he'd just like to have that one pitch back. Depending on well, he probably won't come up to bat then in the the top in the bottom of the seventh, right? This uh, this will probably be it for him, I would think. He's uh, closing in on 90 pitches. Yep. And by the time he finishes this inning, I, I would uh, say yeah. But it's nice to see him bounce back after that uh, last outing uh, with another sharp one here at home. Without a doubt, much uh, easier in his delivery. We talked about how he's the one adjustment he wanted to make, wanted to stand up a little taller. Thought he was getting a little too low, which pushed the ball up. And the changeup has been good tonight. That's one of the best he's thrown all year right there. All Very right, Raul, nice. have a good night tonight. All right, guys, you too, and have a nice day off tomorrow. Thank you. Wait, wait. 
Espinoza strikes out. Here is Tyler Moore. And Jose Lobaton is on deck. Nine strikeouts for Fernandez. So four hits, three runs, all unearned. Yeah, for Worth, that's his 15th career home run against the Marlins. Some of those as a Philly and uh, numerous ones as a national. Echeverria drops it, picks it, throws it. Got him. Didn't panic, didn't have a fast runner either. And there are two outs. It's only the second ground ball out recorded tonight. But it's one of those obviously the inning got away from the Marlins defensively. And then Worth hits a three run homer. But if you see the pitch and you see the location and you see where Worth hit it, you I mean you in baseball vernacular tip your cap to Jason Worth to go opposite field in this ballpark out over the uh, State Farm sign. Opposite field by a lefty or a righty in this ballpark's a, a good shot. They hit that ball in Philly. It's uh, halfway up in the seats. That game's still one nothing in Philly. Atlanta, the Phillies. Phillies have any hits? They have one hit. Bottom of the seventh inning, Braves uh, one nothing over the Phillies. Phillies just with one base hit. How many punch outs for uh, Tehran? Just four. Cliff Lee has 11, and he's losing. <laughs> and he's losing. <laughs> Jose knows the feeling. He was winning. And now all of a sudden it's a tie game. He's got nine strikeouts and no walks. Well, that's the other thing that he really turned around from that last outing. Remember, four walks. How about ten strikeouts? Ten strikeouts. Lobaton goes down. But a 3-3 game in Miami tonight. In Miami tonight, 
Jose Fernandez was dazzling, save one pitch to Jason Worth. In a 3-3 game, Miami will pinch hit for Fernandez with Reed Johnson in the bottom of the seventh inning. Tanner Roark, on the other hand, for the Nationals, is chugging along. He gave up his three-run homer back in the fourth. He was hit by Derek Dietrich. Johnson at the top of the order, Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, and if anybody reaches, John Carlos Stan. Some of the veteran players chatting with uh, Fernandez. You know, we've seen that a few times. We saw Reed Johnson a couple of starts ago having a nice conversation with Jose. Casey McGee. Just, just talking about the game. And that's that's uh, I, you, you can't beat them. That's priceless. Fernandez did try to talk his way to the plate with uh, Mike Redmond and Chuck Hernandez, but at this point, in the bottom of the seventh, you got a chance to try to get a run. Mike Dunn in the bullpen. Fernandez 97 pitches. Johnson hits a fly ball down the left field line. Moore over. And he makes the catch. First out. Bottom seven. As promised. We got the AT&T. Fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo. Hashtag FL fan photo. For a chance to be shown in a future broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Tommy Hunt has sent a selfie in every night this year. And he has yet to get his picture. But you do get a Jose Fernandez. A little Roger Dean spring training, spring training shot. shot. Very, very nice. Keep sending the selfies in, Tommy. Uh, I'll keep trying. Yelich, a pair of strikeouts and a walk, has yet to extend his hit streak, which sits at 10. He had a 10 gamer last year. So it's his career high. Second time he's been there. You know, we've talked about how the guys behind Stanton have done a nice job. And I also think the guys in front of him have helped out because they've allowed him to come to the plate a number of times where the opposition had to pitch to him. This is one of those situations. Yelich in the left field, 11 straight. And he'll bring up a hot Marcelo Zuna. And Stanton pops on deck. Inside out, beautiful swing. 11 gamer, new career high, he'll probably over his long career. Who knows how long a streak he'll put together. Matt Williams is out wants the baseball he got a nice start from Tanner Roark tonight. Nationals go to their bullpen in a 3 3 game in the seventh.
one out, runner at first for Miami. On Sunday, Easter edition of a family Sunday on the 20th. Get your Pepsi 4 for 54 pack. It's Miami and Seattle at 110. First 5,000 kids get a pair of a Danny Echeverria sunglasses, courtesy of Fox Sports Florida. Hey, we know those guys. All kids can run the bases after the game in the Diamond Dash. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. All right, here's the scene. Marcel Ozuna steps in. He's two for three. Drew Storen takes the hill. He's always been very good against the fish. Yelich at first, and Storen chases him back with a throw that's high. Yeah, you look at that back end of the uh, National bullpen. Storen's career ERA against the Marlins is 109. Clippards is about one and a half, and Soriano's is below two. A lot of sliders, good sliders, fastballs from Drew Store. Store, of course, was the Nationals' closer, had that disastrous ending to 2012 in the National League Championship Series when the Cardinals came roaring back in the deciding game five in Washington. The Nationals had a 5 0 lead in that ball game and a 7 5 lead going into the ninth. Then he felt that affected Storen the following year, and it certainly affected the Nationals' front office. They went out and signed Rafael Soriano to a fairly hefty contract. Yelich from first. And Storen was awful last year, the first half of last year. He went down to the minor leagues, made a few adjustments. He was lights out after he came back. And he has continued that here in 2014. One thing, though, if you run on him, you can have success. In his career, base dealers 15 of 17. Yelich thought about running, and Ozuna takes a strike. Well, Storin missed with a couple of fastballs and finally got a fastball in for strike two. Early in the count, Ozuna saw the slider. Got Lobatone behind the plate. On the dirt. Now it's three and two. And now I would expect Yellen to be on the move. John Carlos Stanton. Seven terrific innings from Jose Fernandez. Three unearned runs. On that Jason Worth three run homer. Yelich not running. Ground ball in the hole. Desmond has it. Out there. The turn. Out there. Really Yelich, was, Yelich was not running. He was not running. And the Nationals turned the double play.
Garrett Jones goes down and gets one for a single. Casey McGee up the middle, and then how about a three-run shot off the FedEx sign by Derek Dietrich? Three nothing. Marlins had the lead. You thought, well, that's going to be enough, but Jose Lobatone starts things for the Nationals. He singles or gets a double, and then there were some misplays in between and an opposite field three-run shot by Jason Wirth. Tied the ball game, so it's 3-3. It's in the hands of the bullpens now. Mike Dunn comes in. You see Dunn's numbers. Jose Fernandez finishes the night with 10 strikeouts, seven innings, four hits, the three runs, unearned runs. Roark went six and a third. Story getting those last two outs. And Tommy, I know you were surprised that Yelich wasn't running on the 3 2 pitch with one out to Ozuna. I mean, there, there are different ways to look at it. You, If you don't send him, you, you leave yourself open for a double play. If you do send him, they can't get the force at second. Maybe get it out at first. Now, first base is open, and Stanton doesn't get to swing the bat, but. Uh, you know, even if if that doesn't happen, you have a couple of men on, and Garrett Jones is after Stan. Zach Walters is up. Walters hits one to left field, hits it deep down the line, and that ball is gone. Goodness! Mike Dunn gives up a long home run to Zach Walters, who homered last night. For his first big league home run. Well, he hit his first one last night. They sent him up to pinch it. And they go, you know what? This guy's a home run hitter. Wow. And the Marlins have been bitten by the long ball oh, again. And the, the bullpen's really been bitten by that long ball. Not sure the pitch didn't have a lot of movement. It was up. And Walters hit it a ton. Well, the last time Dunn appeared, remember, was Sunday in Philly. He gave up the Chase Utley home run in the eighth inning. And a breaking ball misses in. The count's two and zero. Oh. Ball up and in. Yeah, you start looking into the bullpen. Dan Jennings given up a couple of home runs. Mike Dunn now has allowed two. Carlos Marmol, big grand slam. Kevin Slowey's allowed a home run. And Nate McClouth has just walked. And so Dunn. Has a real short lease, so much so that Mike Redmond's on his way out to get him. He gives up a pinch hit homer to Zach Walters to untie the game and then walks the left handed bat in Nate McLeod. And with Rendon, Worth, and then LaRoche, Mike Redmond going to the bullpen. AJ Ramos coming in. It's 4 3 Washington now.
four three ball game. AJ Ramos out of the bullpen. In the eight game losing streak. That Miami snapped last night. The Marlins suffered. Some real downers. Late in ball game. And that involved home runs big home runs by opponents. And in this ball game Jason worth a three run homer. To tie it. Zach Walters. The pride of. Cheyenne Wyoming. Homers to left. His second homer in as many nights, in as many at bats, and those are his first two major league homers. Boy, incredible. And with A.J. Ramos out there, Rich, uh, aside from Steve Ciszek, Ciszek and Ramos, the only relievers that have not allowed a home run this year. Up the middle, Anthony Rendon with a base hit. It chases McLeod to second. One of the questions, and it was not an issue that was really talked about. Marlins bullpen was really good last year. Now, Ciszek was the headliner at the end. Ramos was good. But there were a couple guys, middle guys in that bullpen that put in some solid innings for Chuck Hernandez and Mike Redman. Who are no longer here. Sometimes it's uh, it's tough to replace, and they were veteran guys, Jack Qualls, Ryan Webb, guys who gave you some innings too. And I think as you look at the eight-game losing streak, and you look at tonight, you know Mike Redmond. You talk about Ramos and his effectiveness. You can't use Ramos every night. And especially when you're down a run or in a tight game. And the Marlins were in that spot a lot in that eight game losing streak. If you trot the A team out of the bullpen and you're down a run, who do you bring in if you take the lead? And you hope that. The other relievers are able to hold on, and they were not. They were touched by those big home runs. One and two. You know, I think it was probably after the first week of the season. We were talking about, and really every manager goes through this. You have to early on try to. Kind of piece together your bullpen, figure out who you're going to use, where and when. And I'm not sure Redmond has figured that out yet. Soft liner, shallow left. Yelich makes the catch. For a brief moment, it looked like he lost that ball. And Christian stayed with it. There's an out, and here comes the Roach. And just about everybody, as you pointed out, has been touched by the the long ball bug. Even uh, a Nate Valdi. In his start against the Padres, Alexei Amarista, an unlikely three-run homer to sink the Marlins, and that started the uh, the eight-game slide. Carlos Marmol gave up the Worth Grand Slam. I mean, there have been some expected home run hitters hit home runs, but when you have the Amaristas and Walters. Uh, hitting big home runs. That's another story. And not, nothing against those hitters. They're major league hitters. But you don't expect them to hurt you with big home runs. Caminero gave up the Desmond Grand Slam. Dan Jennings gave up the Rollins walk off shot. Dunn gave up the Utley home run. And, the the and ball that Walters hit was just a slider that didn't uh, didn't break a whole lot. And even though the runs were unearned, Jose Fernandez gave up the Jason Worth three-run homer tonight. So no one has been immune. LaRoche swings and misses. Because on that list you've got middle relievers and the Marlins two top starters. And Evaldi and Fernandez. Roach, a one for three night. Ramos, 
missed away. The count's two and two. Nationals may be without Zimmerman and Harper and Span tonight, but they're deep. But they do have Storen. We've already seen him. Clippard and Soriano. There is Clippard. He worked an inning last night to get sharp. So did Soriano. In anticipation that if the Nationals needed him tonight, they'd be ready. Ramos dueling with LaRoche. Runners first and second, one out. Pitch misses in, counts full. It foul and Zach Walters pinch hitting for Tanner Rourke. Homers to deep left field. Walters, we talked about him last night. Born in Cheyenne, Wyoming, raised in Missoula, Montana, and then ended up in high school in Las Vegas. Played his college ball at the University of San Diego, a Torero. In the dirt, LaRoche walks, and Ramos now has to face Ian Desmond. There's no place to put him. This night started with Derek Dietrich pumping a home run, a three run shot to right field, and giving Miami and Jose Fernandez a 3 0 lead. Desmond, a rip at a fastball. Desmond, a quiet series, one for 10, but a lot of power. Three homers, we've talked about. The grand slam against the Marlins in D.C. Bags are loaded here. Might have been a cross up there. It looked like Salta Lamaki started to, to come out of his crouch and was crossed up with the pitch. And that can make it make it tough on an umpire when a catcher shifts like this. He comes up. He's thinking fastball. It didn't miss by much. It did miss. Two grand slams in his career. Sarasota High School product. Trouble right now for AJ with the command of his off speed stuff. A lot of times he comes in and he has such a good repertoire, he can use that fastball and the changeup and the breaking ball. Check swing, did he go? No appeal, no swing. Three and one. Because of that command issue with the off speed stuff, you know he's got to go fastball here. Desmond knows that too. No place to put him. Desmond scorches one on the ground in the left field. That's a base hit. Scoring is McLeod. Rendon right behind him, and the Nationals put two more on the board. Ian Desmond, a big hit, and Washington. As a 6 3 lead. 
Well, Desmond thinking right along with you. Well, he was right on this pitch. He guessed right. And just increases that lead for the Nationals. Tough to keep him quiet for long. Stretches the lead for Clifford and Soriano. And now Espinoza. 0 for 3 so far tonight. When still just one out in this inning. The inning opened with Zach Walters pumping one in the seats against Mike Dunn. Dunn then walked Nate McLeod. Mike Redmond went to A.J. Ramos, who's given up a single to Anthony Rendon. Jason Worth flied to left. Ramos walked Adam LaRoche, and Desmond just chased home two with a base hit. Carlos Marmol in Miami's bullpen. Hernandez struck out 10. He didn't walk anybody tonight. He's the fourth pitcher in Marlins history to have two games with 10 or more strikeouts and no walks. And Espinosa strikes out. Much needed out for Ramos. Kevin Brown. Ricky Nolasco. Javi Vasquez. Remember the run Vasquez had at the end of 2011? Oh, yeah. He was a nice group of right handers you just mentioned. Vasquez was one of the best uh, pitchers in baseball for those last three months. Tyler Moore now. Javi probably working on his tennis game right now. Strike to more. One and two. This would be a nice win for the Nationals without. Bryce Harper, he was scratched with a uh, tweak in his quad. Obviously, they're without Brian Zimmerman. They head home for a four game series with the Cardinals. Miami has an off day before Seattle gets here on Friday night. And this one really set up nicely for the Marlins. Big win last night. Jose Fernandez on the mound. A three nothing lead early. Fernandez punches out ten. Doesn't walk anybody. Liner down the line. It's curling. And it's just foul. Moore hit it well and hit it out. Yeah, this one's a little bit uh, too close here. Wow. That is barely foul. Two of the three runs that have scored are charged to Mike Dunn. Ground ball, McGee straightens up, throws across in time. But the Nationals, who tied it on the Worth Homer, untie it with Zach Walters and tack on two more.
national. And they've done it with a long ball tonight at Marlins Park. It's never too late to download MLB.com at the ballpark mobile app for great features throughout the year. Check in through the app to earn free tickets. Download the free MLB.com at the ballpark app today. As expected, after Drew Storen, Tyler Clipper takes his turn. Tommy ran through the numbers. The last three of the Nationals' bullpen against the Marlins in their career. Dominant. And Clipper, a familiar sight in a ball game against the Marlins with a really good changeup that Stanton swings and misses. Our Toyota trend. It's the Nationals. He has two or more runs driven in. The Fisher 12 and 0. 17 and 2 when he hits a homer. He's hit 20 of them. In 214 at bats against the Nationals. Sharp ground ball. Desmond fires across. Hey. And out here in the bottom of the eighth. You're right, Rich, about Clipper. He's been in 45 games. This is his 46th appearance against the Marlins in his career. Over 50 innings. And an ERA of 1.42. How's Soriano, just for reference? I know you just for you, reference. You ticked off Soren, who Yeah, Soriano has, has been in 37 career games against the Marlins with an ERA of 1.71. Oh well there, that's a big improvement. And Storen was the lowest of them, right? Storen was uh, just a little over one. 31 games, 1.09 ERA. This is why a, a lot of people pick this ball club, the Nationals, to win the East, maybe win the, the National League and go on and win the whole thing. Because zero in and look how important over the years bullpens have been in postseason and if they get that far they'll have one of the best many a manager has said and this is obviously the first year for Matt Williams that it's not the closer that's the most important. It's the guy in the seventh and the eighth inning that gets you to the closer. And the Nationals certainly with a uh, reconstructed store and whether it's mechanics or psyche. And then Clipper who's been really really good. Since he became a national. And Soriano who's on quite a run ever since. Uh, he was with the Rays and then with the Yankees. Well they've got their three guys. And that, quite frankly, it, and we've talked about it in this, what, 10 game stretch now with uh, heartbreaking long balls has been the difference. The Marlins bullpen has not been able to keep the ball in the ballpark. Well, if you break down the Nationals, you just talked about that bullpen. And then they have three top notch starting pitchers with Gio Gonzalez, Jordan Zimmerman. Don't leave Fister out. Fister will be off the disabled list and he'll be in soon. And certainly Strasburg, who wasn't on the top of his game last night. So you put all that together and mix that in with some of their offense, they're a very solid ball club. At the letters. the Nationals and, and we've noted can't seem to beat the Braves the Braves right now are in Philly and up one nothing in the ninth. Cliff Lee went nine innings for the Phils struck out 13 gave up 11 hits and the one run which was an Evan Gaddis home run and Julio Tehran is one out away from a complete game shutout. He's given up two hits. I mean, how about that? Just two pitchers in a one-nothing ball game. 
in Philly of all places. Been, been that kind of day in baseball. We talked about Johnny Cueto of the Reds. Complete game shutout. He had 12 strikeouts. Those two guys are dealing in Texas. King Felix and you Darvish. Another bouncer for Desmond. Nicely handled on the transfer. And Tyler Clifford does what Tyler Clifford does. Gets Miami out. Uh, apparent on a lot of faces here in Miami. Carlos Marmol in. The uh, Nationals have scored six unanswered runs. The first four of which came on home runs. A three run shot by Jason Worth. A pinch hit home run by Zach Walters. Carlos Marmol is in. This is his seventh appearance already. Of course, like cold hard fact. Last night's 11 run 15 hit outburst. The 13th double double against the Nats since they moved to D.C. Is that a, a, a basketball reference or a in and out burger? <laughs> reference I, I sure. would like to think in and out uh, reference right now. But since the uh, NBA playoffs are about to start, we could use it as a basketball reference too. Lobaton. Marmol throws a strike. Lobaton. Pitcher spot. Steven Souza Jr. is on deck. And then Nate McLeod. Marmol, of course, on that to Wednesday in Washington, D.C., had that messy eighth inning where he hit a batter, hit Nate McLeod. Marlins misplayed a bunt, and then Worth with a grand slam erased a Marlins lead and gave the Nationals. A three run lead, they would win the ball game 10 to 7. Steven Souza is going to pinch in here. This is one of those games, Rich, that will be a, a real downer for the Marlins 
should this lead hold up for the Nationals and it'll be a real pick me up for Washington. Anytime you're trailing one of the premier starters in the league late in a ball game and he's in the process of striking out 10 and walking no one. And you come back at a three run homer from Jason Worth even though all three runs were unearned. Marlins made a couple of errors behind Fernandez. The Nationals then added on against Miami's bullpen. Yeah, if you were to lay out that scenario and say that uh, Jose Fernandez was going to pitch seven innings, strike out 10, walk nobody, and through six innings have a 3 nothing lead, you'd feel pretty good. Armal's breaking ball tumbles in. And it's 3 and 1. Control hasn't been as big an issue for Marmol as I think many expected. Or as his history would indicate. Three walks, six strikeouts in six appearances. Ozuna there to make the catch. And there's two outs. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. Soriano is loose and ready for his entrance. Bullpen coach Matthew LeCroy down there. Former Minnesota twin. I wonder if he was a teammate of Reds. Or if they're from different eras. Ball in a strike and two outs and nobody on. Nationals to head home. Four games with the Cardinals. Marlins await Seattle's arrival Friday night. Yeah, they were teammates. Red could tell us some uh, Matthew LeCroy stories. Not what he's thinking about right now, though. Takes the second strike. Nate McLeod getting the start in center, elevated to the leadoff spot with the removal of Bryce Harper from the lineup. Harper out and day to day with the quad tightness. McLeod has gone 0 for 3 and he's 0 for 4. But it doesn't matter a whole lot because the Nationals have a three run lead. Rafael Soriano coming in.
Over in the fourth, gave Miami a 3 0 lead. Fernandez was cruising, a couple errors, a Jason Worth home run to tie it, and then three in the eighth. All the highlights and Jeff Conine's analysis coming up. Marlins Live presented by Checkers. Jeff looking dapper. The uh, gubernatorial campaign is just about to start. Yep, he's got the uh, the political wave and the thumbs up. And of course, as always, we check on his uh, his socks. Adam on camera and Niner going to show us the socks. There you go. It's a good look. Very nice. Salt of Lamakia now goes after the first pitch and promptly pops it up. One pitch, Soriano gets one out. Rendon makes the catch. Soriano is a lot like Steve Ciszek. He's not a uh, high energy, amped up, slam a Red Bull, <laughs> throbbing with uh, the kinetic. Nervousness that uh, a lot of closers have. Just comes in, he throws strikes. Now, if he gets a save, he'll pull the shirt out and maybe do a chest bump or something, but nothing too dramatic. He doesn't have the, uh, you know, the Fernando Rodney thing. But he's got that, what he does have is that nice, fluid, easy delivery. Not to mention some pretty good stuff. Former position player who couldn't hit in Seattle's organization. They made him into a pitcher and he's made a nice career out of it. AT&T. Uverse. Rewind. This was a Dietrich Homer. They went a long ways. And right now it seems like a, a distant replay. You see that was a book. That Jerry Kramer's book. Distant replay or instant replay? I don't think he wrote, uh, I don't know, a long time ago. It's an old Packers book. Here's the one, two. Dietrich fouling it off his foot. When you've watched an eight game losing streak and you've watched the game go up and smoke, sometimes. Things pop into your head, but yeah, they're usually things that uh, aren't pertaining to what we're watching. Swing and a miss. Dietrich goes down on strikes. Easy fastball. You saw the slider before that. And then Soriano came back with, you know, not blazing 91, but the ball just jumps on. Him. And he threw that ball by Dietrich. And that's the thing. It's silky smooth until it leaves his hand. And then it's on fire. Echeverria. To short, Desmond gets the out, and the Nationals steal one from the Marlins. Jose Fernandez was cruising. The defense got shaky. Fernandez gave up a three run homer to Jason Worth. Then the bullpen folded, and just like that, on a night where the Marlins looked like they were headed for a, a nice win and a series win, the Nationals come from behind, and the rookie hits another homer. Zach Walters. A pinch hit homer the distance in this one. 6-3 Nationals.